That really could happen. All right. Uh, this is a very interesting setup, so I'm not quite sure which way I should be facing. Uh, here, here. How about this? We decide this for decide this by who applaud and cheer the artist. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Uh, but here's the thing, you know, I started doing stand-up comedy in Boston. <laughs> and uh, comedy looks easy, but it takes years and years to find your own voice and uh, your stage persona. You know? and when I first started out, I wasn't in Asia, okay? <laughs> That's how far I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people probably don't quite, are not familiar with uh, Boston. Boston has a very close-knit Asian-American comedy community. Uh, basically, with myself. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I started doing comedy there, and uh, for some reason, a lot of the stand-up comedy happened in the Chinese restaurant. You know? And uh, it was really weird when I go on stage, uh, some of the uh, MC guys they just introduced me like this. Oh, I found a nice guy from the kitchen. <laughs> so okay, I just keep walking on to the stage, and one customer actually raised his glass. He was like, uh, "Ice tea, please." <laughs> I was like, wow, what, "What kind of treatment is this?" You know. Uh, but it was so rare to see any Asian performers at the time. You know? But now, you know, time has changed. You know, we we have a lot of great Asian performers. Uh, by a show of hands, who has watched live comedy before this one? Yeah. Okay. Well, most of you have never watched one. Right? Okay. Yeah, watch no, you never watched it now. Okay, I'm glad I'm the first time. <laughs> Thank you so much. But uh, uh, the thing is, uh, just remember to uh, you know look out for the Asian performers. There, there are quite a few in LA. Just uh, go and support them. Um, okay. Um, so. Uh, by doing stand up comedy, I actually learned a lot about, uh, about America. You know, like I used to be a scientist. You know, I have a PhD in, in biochemistry. Okay. Woo! Uh -huh. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. As a as a biologist, I want to let you know this knowledge. Okay, man, uh, when a man is under a lot of pressure and his hormones got uh, all messed up. He can actually produce milk. <laughs> wow, you know, see, I bet you guys didn't know this knowledge, right? <laughs> when I first heard about it, I was amazed. I was like, wow, this is so empowering, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would always say to people, hey, don't push me too hard. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to breastfeed you. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I proposed stand up comedy for years and years without getting paid. So finally, uh, one guy called me and said, hey, come to my club. I got a gig for you. It pays $50 for 15 minutes of performance. I was like, wow, 15 minutes for $50. That's $200 per hour. <laughs> I'm middle class now. <laughs> I was so excited that I drove three hours to get there. <laughs> Did my 15 minute routine. And uh, afterwards, the, the owner said to me, hey, you did a pretty good job, but uh, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have the money to pay you. I owe you one. So, you know, I couldn't do anything. I just started to fly back, and uh, uh, I got lost on my way back. So I pulled into a gas station. You know, as soon as I pulled in, there's a car pulled in front of me. And I started to reverse my car. There's a car pulled behind me. I was like, oh, no, this is not good. So, uh, and uh, my, uh, I was riding with a white comedian friend of mine. He was like, hey, Jill, uh, just, you know, do you, do you have a gun? I said, no, I don't have a gun. He said, do you have a knife? I said, I don't have a knife either. He was like, oh, no. Do you have a tattoo? <laughs> I was like, is this, this going to work? You know? I might as well. So I just roll out my sleeves, and I started to write Chinese characters. <laughs> On my arm, you know, I roll like shit. <laughs> and I was like, what if this guy doesn't understand Chinese, you know? So I have to put English subtitle under it. <laughs> I was like, bad, nasty, <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's, uh, and then, uh, you know, I was, there's some, also cultural misunderstandings too. Once I went to a biker's bar, you know, I figured, you know, I have a bike, you know, so. I got in there and this tough looking dude came out to me and said, hey, what are you looking at? I'm gonna kick your ass. I was like, oh, my ass. 
that's the most cushioned part of my body. <laughs> this guy's being mean and considerate at the same time. <laughs> So I wasn't exactly sure how serious he was, but then he got really even, even madder. He was like, I'm gonna take you down to Chinatown. <laughs> I was like, you probably don't want to do that. He said, why not? I said, once we're in Chinatown, you can't find me. <laughs> so I got away with it. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I think my time is almost up. Uh, are you guys here to dance or? Yeah, okay. Talk more, talk more. <laughs> uh, just, just kidding, just kidding. Um, but here's the thing. Um, I just want to say one thing before I go. Uh, I know that the past two years has been really tough, you know. Uh, between March 2020 and March 2022, there were like 7,500 reported instances against Asian Americans, you know. And that just made me think, how did Mark Warburg have so much time on this end? <laughs> yeah, and uh, it, it's, it's, been, it's been really tough. And, uh, you know, of course, earlier this year, you know, we had this horrible existence here, right in this ballroom. And uh, in the beginning, I was horrified, thinking this is going to be another terrible uh, Asian hate instance. Uh, but then I found out that the uh, perpetrator is also an Asian, you know. The sad thing is that uh, for a brief moment, I was relieved. I was like, okay, at least this time we're not outnumbered, you know? That's just how bad things uh, have become. And uh, I remember during the time I was invited to a TV discussion panel. They were like, we need to talk about the pandemic induced into Asian hate. I said, yes, but I also want to talk about the anti-Asian discrimination before the pandemic. And the TV people are like, okay, we're gonna look for somebody else. <laughs> I think that's the status we're in right now. You know, people just want to talk about the, what's in the news. They don't want to address the root cause. And that's probably why we have to keep talking about uh, this uh, actual deep-rooted anti-Asian racism that existed long before the pandemic. And, uh, and one of the indications is, uh, even after so many Asians getting attacked, I still see people commenting and saying things like, hey, I'm glad to see someone is knocking the Asians down a notch on their privilege. I was like, oh, what did we have privilege, guys? You know, this is horrible, you know? And uh, so that, that is why, you know, uh, I, I've been, you know, even in my stand-up routines, I've tried to incorporate Asian American history into it, but nobody was interested. Until last year, they were like, oh my god, so many Asians are getting attacked. We want to see your material. <laughs> I was like, what did my material do? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, and then by the time I got my material ready, they were saying, oh, you know, we're, we're moving on to uh, anti-Semitism now. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's always something. That is why we have to, uh, you know, uh, keep uh, getting our message out and keep fighting. Um, and uh, just it takes a lot to, I guess, uh, you know, keep our, uh, you know, fight for our rights, fight for our you know, lifestyle, fight for our hopes and dreams. And uh, you know, speaking of lifestyle, I think ballroom dancing is it is one of our lifestyle, right? <laughs> and the reason I said this is also because when I first came to America, I went to a function, and I was just basically mostly white people and uh, the music starts. So I, uh, I just took my wife and we started to dance on the floor. And after a while, I noticed that we're the only ones who are dancing. And everybody else just stand there with their hands over their heart. <laughs> and, and that is when I found out <laughs> that's the American anthem. <laughs> And uh, it's very hard to dance to. <laughs> yeah, I just hope that uh, for the rest of the evening, you guys are going to have a great time and everybody will get on the floor and dance. Uh, can we do that? Woo! All right. Yeah. Yeah.